Doctors are incredibly unique beings, and they are only somewhere between 1% and 2% of the population. Being so different has a lot of impact on their own ways of experiencing themselves emotionally as well as experiencing others. In today's episode, we are talking about emotional intelligence for reflectors, and we'll go over emotional themes for them based on their type, how they may impact others and how others impact them, emotional pitfalls to watch out for, solutions to those pitfalls, and best practices for reflectors to help them embody their emotional intelligence potential. If you're a reflector, you work with one, you love one, especially if you parent one, this episode is for you. Welcome to Heart-Centered Human Design, Emotional Intelligence and Conscious Business, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs that want meaningful success and work-life balance so they can wake up every day feeling empowered, inspired, and supported by work and life. I'm your host, Vanessa Naja, Human Design Specialist and Coach, and my mission is to help you be on purpose and fulfill your potential in life, love, and business. And I'm so excited to help you do that through human design. If you want to dive deeper into your own emotional intelligence potential, at the end of this episode, I will give you more information on how to do that through my program, Emotional Intelligence by Design. To get the most out of this episode, you'll already want to have a foundational understanding of the reflector type. So if you're brand new to human design or you just want a review, I recommend listening to season one, episode eight to get that foundation. The purpose of the reflector is to evaluate the health of their environment and their communities. In BG5, the business application of human design, reflectors are known as evaluators. And they are very different and unique in their ability to do this. Unlike all of the other types, reflectors do not have any of their centers in their chart defined. Now, remember, a defined center is energy that is consistently your energy. When you have a defined center, you broadcast that energy out into the world. Other people receive it from you. It is your nature and it is consistent. Reflectors do not have any defined centers. And this makes them very changeable and very chameleon-like. And they are, they're going to be experiencing themselves differently every day based on the cycle of the moon. The other types are all more impacted by the sun. The reflector is the only type that is really deeply connected with the moon in a way that nobody else is. The moon and the cycles of the moon gives the reflector the consistency throughout that 28-day cycle that they are lacking in their daily lives as a result of not having any defined centers. Understanding how the moon cycle works for them is really important in not only their decision-making strategy, but also planning for the future, especially in business. So reflectors, although they do not have any defined centers, they do have defined gates on the centers, depending on their planetary placement. The moon moves through the entire chart, through all 64 gates of the chart, every 28 and a half days. And when the moon moves through a gate that activates a channel for a reflector, so say the reflector has one gate, the moon moves into the other gate, a channel is activated, which will activate two centers for them. Now, the moon will not always activate a center because it might be defining a gate that they already have, or it might be defining a gate where they do not have the other side. So they're not always going to be having channels depending on where the moon is, but they can know that throughout that 20 and a half day cycle, every day of the cycle, they may or may not have very specific definition and they can rely on that happening whenever the moon is activating a channel for them. So when they really understand how their moon cycle works, this will give them the consistency that they lack in their everyday life. Their aura or their electromagnetic frequency is sampling. And what this means is with all of this openness, they are constantly taking in the energy of their environment and of the people that surround them. 
then they are evaluating and reflecting that energy back. Their aura is often said to have a Teflon quality in the sense that they, even though they are taking in all of this energy, it doesn't stick to them. They are able to discharge it. Now, it is important for them to have plenty of alone time in order to discharge all that energy and also to be able to spend with their own aura and experiencing their own frequency for, for whatever that specific day is without taking on the energy of other people. Being in the right environment is essential for reflectors. They are very sensitive to the environment and reflecting the health of the environment is part of their purpose. So finding places where they really feel good and living, working in those places is really important because when a reflector is not in the right environment, things are not going to flow for them and they're going to be experiencing a lot of disappointment. So finding the right environment first and foremost is key and then they will also likely be with the right people. If you're a reflector and you're in an environment that you don't love, doing your best to change your environment can be so beneficial. And if for some reason you cannot change your environment right now, doing your best to make it as comfortable for you as possible. So you can move furniture around, you can bring in artwork, flowers, crystals, things that make you feel good just to make your environment as comfortable as possible if you're not yet in the right environment. Now, having all centers undefined means that their solar plexus is undefined. Now, the solar plexus, which governs the emotional and spiritual awareness, this is a place where they're often taking in and amplifying the emotional energy of other people. So understanding this and getting to a place where they're really clear about what emotional energy they have, they're taking in and evaluating from others versus what is their own emotional energy is really really important for anybody with an undefined solar plexus. When it comes to decision making, having an undefined solar plexus, it's important for reflectors to really honor their own decision making strategy and not making decisions that they think will keep somebody else happy so that they don't need to take in and amplify somebody else's emotions that they don't want to be experiencing. Now remember, the decision making strategy or the authority for the reflector is waiting through their 20 and a half day moon cycle so that they can experience and contemplate the decision that they're making in a consistent way. So remember, not they're not going to have consistency over days, but they will over their moon cycle. And a complete moon cycle will give them a complete picture of the decision that they are trying to make. And sometimes if it's a really big decision, it could take more than one moon cycle. A unique thing that reflectors are dealing with here is that we are so pressured to make decisions fast, making in the moment snap decisions. Other people can pressure us. There's things, you know, if you want to make a purchase or invest in something, you get a fast action bonus or the steal is only good for this amount of time. And that can be, that can be really triggering. So it's important to remember as a reflector, those big decisions that you are making in life, they're going to wait for you to go through your decision-making process. And if you're rushed into a decision, it is probably not the right decision for you. Also, because as a reflector, reflectors are so different and they're so rare, they can really feel different from other people. It can be really helpful to find other reflectors. And of course, reflectors are rare. So you may have to do a little bit of research and find online communities, find other people that are living in their human design experiment that are reflectors. So you can share your experience of being a reflector with each other. It's going to be hard for somebody that is not a reflector to really understand this. And all reflectors are going to be very unique and super different from each other because it is so based on the defined gates that they have in their chart. Their moon cycles are going to be very different. They also have the potential to experience what it might be like to be any of the other types, depending on how the moon is activating their chart. And they have to be careful not to act based on the experience of feeling like another type. So for example, if a reflector, if there's a lunar transit going on, that activates a manifested channel in a reflector, they may really feel like initiating something new that day. Maybe they have a creative urge and they really just want to jump in on it. 
And that is going to lead to disappointment because that is not their authority. Even if they're having the experience of being a manifester that day, they are still a reflector and have to honor their unique way and their unique decision-making strategy. So understanding the transits for this is also very helpful because if you're a reflector and say your solar plexus is highlighted on a certain day or maybe your spleen and you're having all these instinctive, intuitive moments, you still need to honor your own decision-making strategy. Now, if you are in a relationship with a reflector, maybe you work with one or you love or live with one or you parent one, it can be really helpful for you to understand to the best of your ability what the reflector is experiencing and to support them in their experience. And one way to do that is to encourage them to really take their time in making decisions. Don't ever pressure them into making fast decisions. If you are very emotionally attached to a certain decision, you can communicate about that experience for you and then make sure to let them have plenty of alone time and let them take their whole cycle to make their own decisions for what is best for them. Encouraging alone time is also something really beneficial that you can do for the reflectors in your life. They really need to take that time to discharge any of the energy that they have taken on throughout the day and the majority of the time when they're with other people, unless they happen to be the reflector that doesn't have electromagnetics with them, they are going to be taking in that person's definition all the time. Letting go of that, letting go of what is not them and stepping into their own aura, experiencing their own aura is so important for them. So really encourage that alone time and also understand that they need it and don't take it personally if they want a lot more alone time that you might want. So for all the reflectors out there listening to this, I know you are so unique and different and special in your own way. I really encourage you to find other reflectors, to look into your moon cycle, to really understand how it impacts you and where you have consistency throughout the month. Also understanding that you're not going to have consistency every day and that is okay. I really encourage that for you. If you want to dive deeper into your own emotional intelligence based on your design, I invite you to check out my program, Emotional Intelligence by Design, where you get unique individual one-on-one -on -one guidance from me on your chart so that you can really be on purpose and step into the highest expression of your own unique emotional intelligence potential. If you'd like to know more about that, you can check it out at vanessanaja.com forward slash emotional intelligence. I'd love to hear how this landed for you. Please comment and let me know anything that you got out of this episode, especially if you are a reflector. You can reach me at HD Vanessa Naja on Instagram and send me a DM, or you can email me through my website, vanessanaja.com.